Today, I'm spending the night in one of the most famous English side estates that you can stay in as a hotel guest. It's called Cliveden House, and I visited this vast property to find out what it's like staying in a 172-year-old, formerly aristocratic mansion owned by the Astors. It's now been turned into an ultra-luxury five-star boutique hotel. So let's find out if the beauty of the grounds and the ostentatious manner is worth the hefty price tag associated. This video is sponsored by AG1. Go to drinkag1.com slash bright sun travels to get a free one year supply of AG vitamin D3 plus K2 plus five AG1 travel packs with your first purchase of AG1. As you can probably imagine, this estate has a storied history spanning across 300 years of English history. The property is located around an hour's drive outside of London city centre, or approximately 30 miles. It's within Buckinghamshire, and situated along the River Thames. Its origins date all the way back to the mid-1600s, when the second Duke of Buckingham had the house constructed. From there, it changed hands a few times, including a lease to the Prince of Wales. However, the home would ultimately burn down in the spring of 1795. The ruins would essentially sit abandoned until 1824, when it was purchased and a new estate would be constructed. Though that house would only last a few years, as the house would suffer yet another fire by 1849. Finally, in 1852, the third and final manor that stands today was constructed. By the end of the century, American millionaire William Waldorf Astor had purchased the property, and then began living a lavish life in their massive estate and hosting iconic figures of the time from Charlie Chaplin, Franklin Roosevelt, Amy Johnson, and even Winston Churchill. Descendants of the Astors would continue to live there for decades, notably John Jacob Astor, who would reside there until his infamous death aboard the RMS Titanic. The family ultimately decided to give the property over to the National Trust, a government agency designed to oversee the preservation of historic properties. The deal was that the Astors could live there as long as they wished, but when they finally decided to leave, the property would revert to the NT's ownership. In 1966, following the death of Bill Astor, that deal went through and the ownership was officially changed. In the 1980s, the house was converted into a hotel and leased to an appropriate operator. Today, that hotel operator is Relais and Chateau, a company that owns a number of smaller boutique properties around Europe and really the whole world. So while this property is situated on over 370 acres, the mansion itself, in comparison, takes up a small footprint. In fact, this property only has 48 guest rooms in total. Like, that's it for the entire hotel. So, no matter what room you're staying in, you're always going to feel a bit special with what you get. We booked the cheapest room you can get, a club room, which is admittedly a little more appealing in the pictures rather than what we got. But because every room in the property is more or less unique in layout and appointments, it's a gamble on what you're actually going to get. There's so few rooms in the property that you don't even get a room number, rather a surname of the notable person who wants to occupy your room. Ours was Mr. Lee, and I found the accommodation to be very comfortable. For the price point, which I'll reveal at the end of the video, and the fact that this is a 5 star hotel, eh, it's bordering on the edge of if it's actually an ultra luxury accommodation. Now there are things that are wonderful, like the bed, which is the most comfortable hotel bed I have ever felt, ever. There is complimentary water provided, and a few complimentary snacks, which are appreciated. Some of the furniture within the room is actually antique, and the walls are adorned with photos of Mr. Lee himself. There's also an in-room tablet that acts as your own concierge to view information about the property and order in room service. The bathroom is also very well appointed, with marble lining the floors and walls, quality soap products, and even heated floors. The robes and towels also have a nice weight to them and feel very premium. Unfortunately, however, there are some drawbacks. Our room was located in one of the two wings flanking the main house, and because we were all the way in the back, our two windows faced onto an employee service area. So despite some very pretty countryside vistas in the background, there was definitely a lack of privacy. Our only other issues were somewhat minor. 
The hot water was very inconsistent in the shower, and the carpets looked a bit dirty and worn, as did the small sofa we got. But these are things to expect for such an old structure, really a sacrifice you have to give with the historical nature of the building. Across the other 48 rooms at the hotel, you can get a lot more ostentatious with your accommodations. Clifton also offers a bunch of room types from the outer building hot tub rooms to the main house deluxe suites, capping it off with the Lady Astor suite. If you're a very large family or you need several bedrooms, there is also a cottage along the river. For such an old building, the amenities here are pretty abundant, with a full spa facility including an outdoor pool with comfortable seating and a relaxed atmosphere, as well as an indoor pool that's also just as premium looking. The hotel also has a range of activities, especially if you want to get very British, like country sports, landscaping, and falconry, though all at an extra cost. Since the property is along the river, you can also take out one of their two boats, models of which are displayed in the Great Hall. Prices to take them out range from 300 to 390 pounds for the first hour, or 515 to 1830 pounds per one-way trips down the river to a set destination. Honestly, not too bad if you intend to bring others and split the cost. However, by far the best activity and amenity this hotel offers also happens to be free, and that's the vast ground. There are so many winding paths, secret gardens, lost fountains, and sweeping views that you'll never get tired of walking the grounds here. It's mind-blowingly pretty every way you look, and it's even more magical in the evening when the sun is setting. It's just you and your fellow guests on property, and because there are so few rooms, the whole area gets very quiet. Really, it's such a peaceful and serene landscape that makes this hotel experience difficult to replicate elsewhere, especially in North America. With all of this exploring, you'll probably be quite hungry at the end of the day. Clifton has three restaurants and two bars on property to choose from. There's a somewhat secluded pool bar tucked away within the indoor pool structure, as well as the residence bar, which is a stately and frankly beautiful lounge for hotel guests only that has comfortable seating and fantastic views. They also have an extensive selection of liquors, including bourbons and malt scotches. My personal favorite, Lagavulin 16, included. However, it was something like 21 pounds for a glass, which is way too much. This, unfortunately, and as most of you probably expected, also continues on into the restaurants here. All of them, from the Conservatory Cafe to the Astor Grill and the Fine Dining Cliveden Dining Room, all suffer from lower-than-average ratings for their price point. Most of the negative reviews claiming that the food and service doesn't match what you pay, while others think that it was just alright. While I never got a chance to try the first two restaurants, I did order the Pesto Linguini for dinner at the residence bar, which I thought was really good, though it should have been for £24. Our room rate also came with breakfast included, which actually most bookings do. Breakfast was served a la carte in the main dining room. My pancake was good, but there was also a breakfast buffet included as well, and my god, it is probably the most breathtakingly beautiful buffet room you can possibly imagine. Again, it was good, but nothing spectacular like you'd have at other five-star hotels. But the view and the atmosphere really made this something special that you can't get anywhere else. I really think all of this makes it a solid experience. Cliveden also doesn't charge you for parking, and they do offer what I think at least is a complimentary shuttle around town in their new Mercedes EQV. So, all of this mounts up to be a very special and exclusive experience that is all just for you. Right? Well, that's the issue. This is all just open to the public. Now don't get me wrong, a place like this absolutely should be owned by the government and be open to all. But the very fact that anyone can visit Cliveden kinda makes staying here and spending so much money to do so a bit redundant. National Trust members get free entry, and the general public must pay a fee of £17 for an adult. There is a separate parking lot at the northeast corner of the property, and really, once you're in, you get just about the same amount of access to the estate that you would as if you were staying here. The gardens, the trails, and even select areas of the manor itself. So with that in mind, can you really justify the price of being one of the select few to rest your head here? Well, let's talk about the price. 
We paid £616 for our one night stay here in a club room. Now their website does claim that prices can get as low as £445 per night, and I even found a discounted rate for £353 a night if you stay more than two nights. If you want to be more central, rooms inside the main house start at £765 and climb to an eye-watering £1,565 a night for the Lady Astor Suites. So yeah, it's not exactly cheap, and while you can find better deals on sites like Priceline, the reality is, is that this is a special experience, so much so that you can't even really call it a hotel. It's 48 guest rooms across 370 acres, and you're sleeping in something over 170 years old. It's a surreal and very special place to stay, especially if you have a fascination in history and art. Cliveden, however, isn't the only estate you can find as your accommodation. Far from it, in fact. There are plenty of estates around the southern UK to stay in, like the Lucknan Park Hotel or the Bath Priory, the latter having rooms as low as £193 a night. For the more mainstream hotel alliances, Marriott has the Langley, a wonderful property that we also got a chance to stay in that has a deceivingly spectacular spa facility. You can stay there for as low as £413 a night, or 58,000 Bonvoy points per night. None of these will be as grand or as prestigious as Cliveden, but they give similar experiences for arguably much less. So let's give this an actual rated score, on Jake's Is It Any Good score. I'll start with the location. The property is situated on a hill, on the river, and only an hour away from the metropolis that is London. It's a spectacular countryside, and the only downside, really, is that it's often under the flight path for Heathrow, and that does detract a bit from the serene ambience. I'll give it a 9 out of 10. Amenities are plentiful for a boutique hotel like this, boasting several restaurants, two pools, a few bars, and plenty of paid activities. I do wish there was a less expensive eatery on the property, and the ones that are on site don't have the best reviews and could use some refinement to match the ultra-luxury price tag. It's a 7 out of 10. Luxury, however, is strong. The rooms feel comfortable and very high quality in most aspects, with a sense of prestige and stateliness as you walk the halls. It's very good, but not perfect, and it's a 9 out of 10. Service was unfortunately not the greatest here. No one really stood out to us, and while everyone was friendly, it wasn't service to match the price tag. It's a 5 out of 10. Finally, there's value, and this is a tough one. On one hand, you're staying in one of the most iconic British estates with a storied history. It's where dignitaries throughout history came to visit, and I get why it's priced this way. The amount of maintenance this property requires is probably at a loss for how much money they're actually bringing in. But on the other hand, and from the consumer's point of view, there are cheaper alternatives that can get you a similar experience. I think that gives it a 7 out of 10. And that brings the final score to 37 out of 50. Cliveden is a spectacular property, and I'm so privileged to have visited it. And if you want to see the vast and impressive estate for yourself, I would suggest visiting the property at least for the afternoon. If you're celebrating a special occasion and intend on spending every waking hour perusing the halls, taking in the gardens, and getting afternoon tea, then yeah, maybe it is worth the special trip. This video has legitimately been made possible by AG1, which is actually kind of the perfect sponsor for this video and the channel. I don't know about you, but when I'm traveling, I throw all nutrition out the window. And that's because I'm away from home and it's hard to meet all of your daily nutritional goals. AG1 is a great and quite tasty nutritional beverage that increases my intake of vitamins. It's loaded with 75 vitamins and minerals, and is also gluten-free and dairy-free, and is also paleo, vegan, and keto. Now, it's also important to me that you remember that AG1, and really any nutritional supplement, isn't a one-stop shop for your health. But it is a really great companion to your daily nutritional routine. And when you're traveling, when you're actually not getting enough nutrition throughout your day, AG1 is perfect with their travel sized packets. I really do like taking AG1, and I have been for the last few weeks. It's super easy to take, and because it's so tasty, it's really easy to just incorporate into your daily routine. 
you can go to drinkag1.com slash brightsuntravels to get a free one-year supply of AG vitamin D3 plus K2, as well as those five AG1 travel packs with your first purchase of AG1. Anyway guys, my name is Jake, and thank you very much for watching.